Okay, class, welcome. We're here in the greenhouse. We're surrounded by plants, things that are growing in this perfectly controlled environment. And we have things that are going to market. We have not only ornamentals, but in here there's a lot of fruit and veggie production that's going uh, to market. And so we need to have a plan. We need to have an integrated pest management plan, or IPM. All right, the IPM plan will help us to make certain that we have a plan for the pests and diseases that we might have affecting these plants. Again, we're in a perfectly controlled environment. This environment uh, has conducive conditions for growing uh, plants, but it's also conducive for growing insects and disease. So the way you utilize IPM is it has to start before you begin production. So you have to try to prevent the problem. And keeping good records and knowing what problems you've had in the past will help you to prevent problems in the future. It begins prior to your initial form of propagation. And so having that plan is important. Building knowledge uh, from past events is important because when we start to have issues with disease and insect, they're usually not the first time we've seen it. And by having good records, then we could uh, head those things off before they become a problem. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is understand how to scout and learn how to scout. And so if I'm going in, okay, let's go scouting. We're looking at plants. We're looking for abnormal color. And so these pepper plants are green up near the top. I see some wilty leaves. I see some leaves falling off. That would be abnormal color. I look from bottom to top of the plant. That's a visual inspection. I'm looking for death of tissue. Now is this caused because this leaf just fell off the plant? Or is a disease or insect causing that leaf to fall off? I'm looking for wilt. Wilt could be caused by lack of water, but wilt could also be caused by insect and disease. I'm looking for abnormal growth. Growth that just doesn't look normal. We oftentimes see that on the tomato plants. Uh, again, that could be a nutrition issue, it could be a temperature issue, but most likely it would be a disease or insect issue requiring IPM. Um, we're looking for shiny, shiny residual um, drops from uh, aphids or other insects that would be up underneath the leaves. You might not see them by visually finding them, but you'd see the signs of them because that shiny, sticky substance would drip down on lower leaves. In this greenhouse, and I'm looking at plants, I'm thinking, okay, this plant, this cucumber plant looks very healthy. As I start to look closer, I turn the leaf and I see a little bit of speckled on the leaves. I turn it over, I look, I'm scouting, I'm looking for things that look different. As I work my way down, I'm looking at a leaf that's uh, kind of uh, green veins, and I, if I look very closely, I see a little bit of webbing there. I'm looking at the webbing to determine if we have some sort of mite problem, a disease problem, or if this is just a nutrient management problem, because nutrient management uh, issues, nutrient toxicities or deficiencies could cause uh, veination to look like that. And so I'm working my way. I'm looking at plants, something that doesn't quite look right. I'm doing, um, taking a piece of white paper, laying it underneath, tapping a plant. I'm hanging yellow. Looking under at the plant. I'm also looking at our cleanliness of the site. Um, there's some down debris and some leaves on the ground. That's a perfect place for uh, insects to be harbored. Outside where there's weed issues, we would be um, maintaining those weeds so that we're not bringing in other additional um, insects. So I'm looking at quality of fruit. I'm looking for um, uh, fruit that's not ripening at the right stage. I'm looking at different colors of leaves. As I'm inspecting this greenhouse, I'm walking looking for fungi, bacteria, viruses. I might not be the best person to identify all those things, and you may have to bring in a pathologist or send samples out, but I can tell you what unhappy plants 
would look like. And so as you're inspecting, you're looking for anything outside of the what norm. What causes plant diseases? Well, there's, you can think about a triangle, a disease triangle, disease and insects. There's three elements required for the disease triangle. You have the disease in the middle of the triangle, you have a host, you have the environment, and you have the pathogen. You put all those together in a controlled environment, so you have your host, which would be the type of plant. You have the environment, which is this controlled environment. This could be outdoor production as well, and you would have the outdoor environment. Then you have the pathogen being the disease or the insect causing that, that issue. And a lot of times it's the insect spreading the disease. It could be infectious. It could be a parasite. Um, and once it gets a susceptible host plant, it can uh, go crazy in this favorable environment. That's where we need to track and monitor and have good records and utilize integrated pest management. Management, Because understanding this process is one part of it. Understanding and learning what you have and what's out of the norm is important, but then you have to go to treatment. And through treatment, utilizing integrated pest management, it isn't go immediately to the chemical first when you see the first sign of an insect or a disease. It's understanding the insect and disease. Is it beneficial? Is it um, harmful? What is the threshold level? How many does it take to cause a problem on my plants? And sometimes in this controlled environment, it's not much for something to get out of hand, but you monitor and you look for these uh, disease and insect presence, and once you find them, you determine what's the next step. The next step might be to release beneficial insects, where one insect fights back against another. The next step may be to utilize a, a type of spray that's really minimal, like an oil-based spray or a plant-derived spray. Uh, being an educational facility, we can't have really harmful sprays um, out and about in our greenhouse when people are coming in here. And so getting all these dots connected is the, is the best way to start. Let's go scouting. Okay, here's a plant. What's going on here? Oh, we have some type of white spores on the back side of this pepper leaf. Uh, that doesn't look good. Let's do some research to find out what that is. Let's keep going. Okay, here's a pepper plant with some yellow little uh, eggs near the top of it. Let's find out what that is. All right, I found something while scouting. Here's our nice, beautiful charred plants. They're in the ebb and flood tray. The water happens to be up right now. But I look closely and I see some gray mold here at the base where some uh, plant material has fallen down on the rock wool. That's uh, Boitritis, and we want to control that by keeping this area clean. To control this, we can use uh, peroxide. Here we have some arugula, and down below I see some sticky substance. If I look up underneath these plants, I'll see evidence of some aphids. Here's the exoskeleton of some aphids showing on the tops of the spinach. So as the aphids grow larger, they cast their shells off, and then it stays on the leaf. And you'll be able to see that presence on top of the leaf when the aphids are up underneath the leaf. In this greenhouse, we'll get aphids, we'll get spider mites, we'll get mealybugs, we'll get thrips, we have a lot of fungus gnats, and I think those are typically our, um, our biggest insect problems. We'll plan for those with beneficials, but if they get out, start to get out of control, uh, we'll go to organic or oil-based and plant-based, and then we'll use some of the other uh, chemicals as necessary to control. Typically, we don't have to do very much because the students stay on top of things. If they start to see some aphids, they'll use this neem oil that was mixed up, a plant-based product. It was mixed up correctly, and so if I saw some aphids here and I was a student, I could apply some treatments of neem IPM oil. could be for outside plants, landscaping IPM plants. IPM could be for interior scape plants, such as these container house plants. Oh no, mealybugs. Mealybugs. IPM is for small farms, organic farmers, uh, crops, large-scale crops greenhouse growing. 
Okay, if things are bad enough that we determine that an application of a product needs to be utilized, we need to have understanding about those um, applications. I will train each and every one of you as part of class how to be pesticide uh, applicators and to be ag workers. That's to utilize in a safe environment around uh, pesticides. And so that's a valuable component of being an agricultural worker. Uh, there's some confusion about organic versus kind of conventional chemical pesticides. They're all chemicals and they're all harmful. So we have to make sure that where they're stored is labeled appropriately, um, labeled danger pesticide storage area. You notice there's a pesticide log in there. There's a notebook for record keeping. And when we decide it's time to go in here, we need to know what we're doing and make sure we're gonna read the label. Let's go. All right, I'm in the pesticide cabinet. Once I'm in here, I'm looking around to determine what is the product that I'm gonna use and knowing about that product. Make sure you know what you're using and stay safe. We use quite a few beneficial insects for control. Um, one of the things we use is a white fly predator. We also use a thrips predator. We've used the spider mite predator. Okay, we're here at the refrigerator and we're talking about what are we doing with the refrigerator when it comes to integrated pest management. Well, here in this refrigerator, we have some biological products such as this Mycostop. Mycostop is a biofungicide. It has dry spores and mycelium and we put it in the soil, for instance, when we're growing poinsettias, and the poinsettias are on a table with capillary mat, water's coming up from below them, all the plants are susceptible to the same root and soil diseases. So this mycostop gets applied to the soil and gets applied to the water, and it keeps um, things like pythium root rot from forming in the roots. It actually protects the roots in a way that the biofungicide is at the sites where the root rots would get in and the mycostop blocks it and protects it. We leave it here in the refrigerator and then uh, utilize it by mixing it up with water or with soil. Also here in the refrigerator, we have some uh, premium inoculant. Uh, we put this on our legume crops outside. It's a bio uh, stimulant, a bio control, and it helps uh, form nitrogen for legume plants. We're using it this year on our cover crop. And also here, here's a biological insecticide kept in the refrigerator. This is uh, called Dipel. Dipel is a type of Bacillus uh, thuringiensis that uh, controls the caterpillars, uh, the larvae stage of butterflies and moths. It's the caterpillars that do all the damage. So this Dipel, when added to water and sprayed out using the correct formulation, will make sure you don't have any caterpillars in your crops. We have caterpillars a lot of time in our cool season crops, um, cabbage, kale, etc. They like to get down in the heads and they chew and they cause economic damage to the crops we're trying to sell. So the product Dipel could be used as a biological insecticide. It doesn't affect any other uh, insects or people or etc. It only controls the uh, caterpillars. All right, so just some more examples of what we do and how we do it. Take care.